All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a quick and dirty barn door track for your pull barn, garage, shed, whatever you want. This here is our pump house where we keep the expansion tank and the pump for the deep water well. And I put this barn door up last year, uh, before winter, um, just, just to help keep uh, pipes from freezing. Uh, before we had to prop up a, a full sheet of plywood and then lean logs and bricks up against it and we have a little uh, incandescent light in there that we turn on that faces the pump uh, just to make sure that none of the pipes freeze. Um, we are out here on the coast so we don't really have that big of an issue with hard freezes uh, but that also means that none of our plumbing is hardened against freezing uh, so it's just better to be safe than sorry. So let's get to it. I'm not going to show you you know a step-by-step -step process but I am going to show you all the materials I used and what I did to install this. And if you're on a farm, uh, you should have all this stuff lying around that you can just use at the ready, and this shouldn't cost you nothing. Now the heart of this whole system is a 10-foot T-post. And the size of the T-post you want needs to be twice the width of your door, plus about two to four foot extra. So this is a four-foot door, so I've got one foot, four foot, four foot, and another one foot. So 10 foot T-post. And if you need to, you can sister a couple of them together with a spacer. That shouldn't be a problem. And the way that this works is I just have a piece of two by one eighths bar stock that I drilled four holes through down there at the bottom. And I believe these are one eighth holes and that is a three-eighths, might be a five-sixteenths hole up there, and I have attached a pulley off of a garage door to it and just bolted that on there. And I've got that with just enough space so that there's about a quarter inch clearance next to that flat bar. And I just made two of those. And the way this works is once I get this brick out of the way, and if we're lucky, there's a rattlesnake in there. You just push on this handle. The whole thing slides down on the T-post. If you're on a farm or you're just out in the country, uh, you've probably stolen at least three street signs in your life, so you should have a T-post lying around. And if you've owned a garage for more than a decade, you've had one of those pulleys go out. And if you kept it, and if you had both go out and you kept both of them, you can use those because they don't need to be in super good condition uh, as long as they still roll. That's an old worn out one and that's a brand new one I had to buy because I only had one lying around. And yeah, you can do all this with hand tools. All you need is an electric drill, a set of bits, and some old motor oil. You can drill right through steel and you just hack through it with a hacksaw or a reciprocating saw. And then this door I have here is just two scrap sheets of plywood, all treated of course, and two by fours. And then I went and I was fancy and I put the two by four frame together with some corner brackets and some straight brackets and I had old fence handle lying around and I stuck that on there and this is all just put together with some exterior screws and to make sure that the thing doesn't fall off the end of the track and break I just have some old bolts just a nut on one end just a hex bolt about inch and a half long and I took two big honking washers and I've just cranked on this thing and sandwiched that on top of the T-post and that acts as a stop so that when this slides to the end it hits that and because that goes inside of the pulley the pulley wants to ride up on top of that and it can't because it's just too heavy and it stops uh, but I guess if you had a really big door and it was really heavy and you pushed it really fast it could jump off of that track so there's better ways to do that, but that was the simplest thing I, I found. And this here is true blue cinder block. You can see the chunks of coal ash in there. So luckily that was pretty easy to drill through. So I just got a masonry bit, and I think those are 3 16 inch screws. They might be 5 30 seconds uh, masonry screws, and I just drove those in there with a washer to hold this to the wall. And that's on there pretty solid. Uh, that cinder block, um, it's very porous, so it, not all of the, that's why there's extra screws, is not, not all of these 
uh, want to bite. So yeah, if, if you're at a hardware store and you're looking at barn door tracks and you're thinking, man, I don't want to drop a couple hundred bucks on one of these. I don't need nothing fancy. This is a great, cheap, cost-effective alternative. And it works great for our purpose because all we really need it to do is uh, just block off that door and help hold in some heat in the winter. So anyway, yeah, I know this isn't biology, but this is just something cool that, um, once again, it was one of those things that uh, I had a need and I looked around and I just could not find any like good how-tos on how to do something simple and easy with common hand, common hand tools and common hardware that anyone can find at the scrapyard for free. So I decided to build this on my own and I didn't record that, but now I am. So yeah, that's all you need. You need 10 foot T-post, uh, two garage door pulleys, a uh, set of quarter or five sixteenths bolts, a box of uh, one and five eighths or two inch uh, exterior wood screws, and you know, what's that? 16 foot of two by four and a sheet of plywood and you can make yourself a barn door on a, on a barn door track. And it works great. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Tom's Ugh. biological videography. And this is videography, but it ain't biology. So like and subscribe, do all that jazz. Thanks for watching. See you around. Tom out.